Hey everyone, Jim T. Graham with the RC Groups Live Hangout. It's Friday. No, it's not. It's Thursday. Nope. But Thursday's the new Friday, and I thought it was Friday all day long. We've got uh, no guests this week, which is fine because we usually have more than enough to talk about. And uh, to my, I guess, screen right is Jason Cole. What's going on, everybody? And screen left, we have Brother Matt Ticus Gunticus. Hello, how are you, bro? <laughs> I thought it, I thought his cup said Doctor Who there for a second. <laughs> no, it just says Ooh. the Great State of. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I want to talk about this week and many weeks of my life. Let's make sure my voice is right. It is. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Uh, we all live on our uh, own time planes and realities, but it seems like things are just coming faster and faster as far as. Like, I have a review due, and we're going to talk about it, and it's over my shoulder here. And I can't get to it because news just keeps hitting me in the head. Is it this way for you, you guys? Yes. Yeah, there's so much freaking news going on. I don't know about you, Jason. Yes, there's a lot of news for you, too. So I, I don't know what you're talking about. I haven't seen any, any news whatsoever. <laughs> well, it says it in your lower thirds right there. <laughs> Dreaming of Dubai. There's your freaking news. Well, I heard, and this just in. Hold on. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. This just in from Dubai. <laughs> Mac, Mac Hunt, give us your weather report. Oh, my God. It's uh, cloudy with a chance of total flooding. So uh, I, I was, you know, we all follow everybody's antics, uh, especially our good buddies with uh, ReadyMade RC. RMRC. Our, RMRC, Team RMRC out there, uh, Team Aukbots. So uh, just found out that they're having the heaviest rain they've had in years just today. All operations are shut down. They actually said that for the first time in foreseeable history, they've completely stopped building skyscrapers, which they do 24 hours a day. Jeez. So they've stopped. All the streets are flooding. All operations are shut down. Everybody is hunkered down. Where's my quotation? Hunkered down in Dubai. So. <laughs> I've said this way too many times. You were not with us when we were at the show in no. the Cats. New York. New York. Oh, that was crazy. The whole town flooded. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, there's a lot of water. It was like the main street that was three feet of water downtown. And this is, what, New York or Florida? This was in the Catskill Mountains. Yep. Oh. For the meat fair. Hey, that sounds just like uh, the first um, FPV Florida one that supposedly everybody got uh, stuck. Yeah, all the RVs got stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Back I'm looking to at Dubai, have you, did you see the track? Mm -hmm. I right. ran the tip track yesterday a little bit, and it looks cool. I mean, it's cool looking. It's not very, it's not super technical. There's there's a couple of tricky things to it, but it just looks fast. So I expect mm -hmm. to see some great fast flying tomorrow. Should be some pretty sweet stuff. And they're broadcasting in HD. Wow. So that's going to be pretty neat to see. Speaking of Dubai, I have to retract what I said last week where <laughs> we were talking about how it sounded a little sketchy. Evidently, it's a, a, the real damn deal, and, uh, I mean, it is awesome. I would have loved, it would have been awesome to see uh, these courses, which I guess weren't set up a couple of weeks ago, but it would been great to see this ahead of time just to yeah. see how cool it was. I do want to also take issue with a user on RC Groups. Uh, Humble, Humble Flyer, F-L-I-A-R. Humble pie. He says, apart from a guidebook for girls regarding who not to mate with, who are these people in the photos? I don't know, man. I would think that FPV pilots that are in Dubai would be pretty good gene pool people. That you <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. There's actually, you know, I'm pretty secure in my heterosexuality. There's some pretty good looking fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I just was like, man, does that even... Does that break some sort of rule talking about who? I guess not. I mean, it's just a theory. <laughs> I mean, it's who he thinks people should be breeding with. Mm -hmm. well, regardless that. of that, it's like a stinking good time. I wish I was there. Good luck to those guys tomorrow for sure. And, and here's our promise to you, RC groupers. I don't like that term. I'm not going to use it anymore. RC, RC group RC, lar <laughs> RC largemouth bass. <laughs> um, we will be bringing you we have a direct line to photos coming out of the device show so as we get them you will see them and we'll be pushing them out on the FPV channel I guess it's going out in FPV racing that is correct. It is. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. awesome 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 and yeah. uh, do you have any more to buy stuff because I'm looking at a picture I want to talk about 
Is it that chick that fell asleep? No. Where, okay, sorry. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> what? There was a picture. In your picture flood, there's one picture of this girl who's, like, all happy, and then eight pictures later, she's just passed out in the pits. I'm like, yeah, wow, that is a long them. day. I got to find that now. Uh, uh, so what, what picture are you talking about, Jim T? Uh, before we go there, I do want to say that if you're asleep at an event, I don't know about the other guys, I'm taking your picture. Yeah. And, and I'm going to I'm gonna smile with glee when I get it. There are so many guys that sleep at Seth and chairs. I should just do one, one whole block of sleeping. Sleeping people. dudes. Let's do it at Null. Please, let's get that done because that will be the absolute funniest thing. Some guys just go to sleep. I mean, literally, they go to the show for the purpose of sleeping. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Some of the best naps of my life has taken place at Joe Nall. Do you know who this girl is who's asleep in this photo? Uh, this is in our Dubai coverage. You can find an FPV racing on our channel page. Negatory. I'm pretty sure this is the girl from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. She's like, Cam? Cameron? Yeah, that's her. Go look at the picture. I'm going to send you guys links so you can look at it. <laughs> that's her. You know, we have a link feature here in the live chat, which I've been afraid to use because I thought it would blow the thing up. Oh, I didn't send this link to you. There's a link. Send here's, it. Here's a picture of the Oh, link. yeah, it does, does kind of look like her, doesn't it? Yeah. What's her name? Oh. oh. Um. She's got the Wayfarers on and everything. I bet those are $200 <laughs> glasses right there. That's but, what Wayfarers are? Glasses? Uh, in my day, that's what they were. Why did I think they were like blah, 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 a and a boat shoes. on? I just thought they were like um, penny loafers. I could Google that real quick. <laughs> I have such problems in my life. Okay, so you see her passed out with her Wayfarers on. Um, if you roll up to the top of yeah. the coverage, there she is. Um, like uh, Right next to the two dudes in orange, like, Ten rows down on the right-hand side, there she is. She's totally awake, excited, uh -huh. listening to somebody talk. She's probably like, yeah, you know, I really don't understand what the heck a PD, uh, PID is, but um, okay, you know, and then all of a sudden she's like... You know what happened? She read that post from Humble Flyer, and she's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I am not with these guys. Yeah. I love that picture. I don't know who took it, but they show oh, world drone pricks. Uh, it's awesome. Wait, what did you say? <laughs> world drone pricks. pricks. No, X, X, like chicks with tricks. X, not three. World drone pricks. It's a PG podcast. X you know. is silent, apparently. You know, whatever it is. <laughs> now, what I was going to talk about a long time ago, uh, many sentences ago, is the cool shirts that we're having made for some events that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, we, the guys, and Miss Ashley are getting ready to go first. I can't even believe it. I'm not even 20 days away. We're going to Toledo. Mm -hmm. So it's me, Jason, Matt, Ashley. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a, a deposition. No, we're not going to have a deposition. We're going to have a... <laughs> a good old time. No, at 1 o'clock, Friday and Saturday, we're going to have a conference room. And in that room, we'll be talking about FPV. We'll be on key, keynote speakers. Yes, and we'll also be sharing that room with Ready Made RC, who uh, I guess they said, hey, we want to do a thing on FPV, and so they just uh, put us together, which is fine. That's going to be funny. So you can join us for that, and if you do join us for that, usually we have some shirts to give away at that thing. So mm -hmm. once again, 1 o'clock, Friday, Saturday at the Toledo Show, come to our, uh, dang it, I'm whatever. Seminar. Seminar. Yeah, come to our seminar, and uh ask questions and get a shirt. And then we also have shirts for Joan All. So Matt Gunn and I got together and I said, Matt, let's kind of go retro like the old Army shirts, FG Army shirts. And um, I, des I, I, yeah, I designed a pretty cool, I think I designed a pretty cool logo this time. It's uh, without giving too much away, you can't really give it away unless you show it. So I can just, I can talk about it. Don't, uh, don't, don't tell them the best part. What? All right, I'll tell them. Uh, we, we, it's all the rage right now with the 20-year-olds. These are half shirts, so they come right down below your, your rib your cage. Hal your halter. It's a halter top. It's a half shirt for all they that. come right down below your Uncle Sam nipples. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, on with the show. Tell them what the shirt really looks like. I'm just thinking this could be bad for uh, you know. <laughs> No, we decided to to get a little bit um, uh, militant on these shirts, and so we've decided to go paramilitary, and as Jim calls me, and we decided to make them khaki, well not khaki, desert tan. So we got some nice desert tan shirts. I've got a military style logo on the back with a 3D plane, an extra 330SC on the back inside the that classic military like shield and it says FG Army on it. So it's going to be a great shirt that we can use not just for Joe Nall but we can put it in our store and anybody that's interested in it can pick one up. It's not Joe Nall centric. It's any event. So pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited. So, you know, usually I try to save things up and say them in the right order, but I've found that that, that just is not the best way to do it. So I'm just going to just do that. I talk like I do in real life and just say what comes to my mind. Uh, yeah. Jim, Jim Burke has his extra 330LX full-scale plane that he competes in. And yeah. he, he seems like a year ago he was sending us all kinds of designs. What do you think of this? How do you like this color? And uh, so he finally, I guess they painted it, mm -hmm. and he also has RC Group's logos on there, Flying Giants, Knife Edge, it's all logoed up. And I don't know if it's back in his hangar yet. I know it's headed that way. Mm -hmm. And so, um, first of all, we have some live viewers. Um, I would be uh, interested to see what you guys have to say in the live viewers. And if you're not live and you're watching this on YouTube in the future, um, Shoot me a PM or something if uh, if you have an input on this. So I went out to a major RC company who will not be named because this is not solid, and I said, would you be interested in doing a, uh electric airplane based on the 330LX? And they said, we're actually thinking about doing this. And let me find it. Here it is. So they like the scheme. And I guess what we would do is include stickers for the logos, and you can put those anywhere you want. And so the question from this company is, at the moment, we're leaning towards a 1,400-millimeter plane. Uh, do you think the RC Group's community would want a 1,400-millimeter electric airplane? I need, I need English here. It's a good size. It's under a meter. It's under, just a little under 60 inches or something like that. Yeah. That's big. But I was thinking. It's a decent size. Here, let's let Siri tell us. Oh, God. How many inches is in 1,400 millimeters? Let me think about that. Damn, Siri. She's already 1, taken 1,400 millimeters converts to about 55.1 inches. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. That took her so long. Listen to this, dude. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Well, let me show you how it's really done. 1,400 millimeters, 2 inches. Oh, my phone. 1,400 millimeters equals 55.118 inches. There you go. There you go. There's your Android for you. You know, Siri. And see how much faster that was? Hey, Jason, can you uh, click Siri and then nod at me when she's ready to hear my voice? Oh, well, she can't hear your voice because you're coming through my earphones. Oh, yeah, man. Nab it. Nab it. Nab it. So I was at uh, Joe Nall last year, and I walked up on a group of people telling Siri stories, and they were talking about all the stupid things Siri had said back to them, and something had just happened to us in the truck. Um, and so, uh, I mean, it was an endless supply of stupid things Siri had said to me. It's like she's getting dumber. <sighs> or maybe people can't uh, speak as well. Mm. Oh, oh, about the airplane. So, 55-inch wingspan <laughs> electric airplane. So do you guys think – I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to answer this email. I don't know if the community wants a 55-inch uh, extra. Everyone loves an extra. Yeah, it's, it's uh, EPP or Balsa. I don't know. I guess I guess that's a great way to reply. It's going to be foam, I'm sure. It's EPP. EPO. EPO. It'll be EPO. I'm to the point now where if, if I want a nice biplane, I want Balsa, but – I'm just, maybe I'm getting old and lazy, but just give me a dang foam airplane. You know, they fly good. They're light. Blue yeah, they're gonna they're gonna ruin it for the hobby, though. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of ruining it for the hobby, 
No, I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll talk oh, yeah, about please, this later. Please ruin it. <laughs> ruin, ruin what? Ruin it? What? Like no one else has. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do it. I'll, I'll talk all about right, this later. All right. All right. I'm not going to. I'm not going to pollute that well by starting it off with that sentence. Mm-hmm. Hey, speaking of ruin, ruin it for the hobby. Check this out. Oh, that's not going to fly too well. QNBR. No. Is that a boomerang? Yeah. What? Do you throw it like the Australians do? Yeah, mate. So that's the QAVR, I guess the R is for race. The R is for really, really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The R is for uh, do you even race, bro? So you got that in the mail this morning, and how long did it take you just to bolt everything up? About 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Tell you yeah. what, though, this this cage up front here, was tricky to sandwich together. Like, don't let it fool you. It was a nightmare. It took me probably eight of those ten minutes was just fiddling with this, <laughs> these three little pieces right here. But um, I'm excited, man. I cannot wait to beat this thing around. Did you use Loctite on everything? I did. Good call, Jim T. Graham. Thank yeah. you. Metal on metal, Loctited. I use Loctite on everything now, just blue, nothing crazy. There you go. So, um, so anyway, about I, I'm excited. I really want to know who it is, this company that's going to build Jim Burke's killer orange and blue 330. Because I love that color scheme so much. I actually told him I was going to paint one of my RC race boats just like that. That it's got this <laughs> beautiful orange fade on the front of it. Is there any way for us to to share screen and show everybody what it looks like? It should um, be in your toolbox, and there's no reason not to play around with it now. RCG yeah. RCG full scale. I'm making notes also here. so It's, I the, it's the little green icon with the arrow, white arrow. It's not the toolbox. It's just called screen share. Let's see. Be careful, I, yeah, I'm not going to share screen unless I am fully... I uh, go to my blog, and there's pictures in there with my uh, full scale sweetheart, Patty Wagstaff. Who I actually uh, talked yeah. on the phone with at one point. Hi, Miss Patty. Patty has pink hair now. Or at least she did. Oh, here it is with um without any stickers on it. Can I show that? Yeah. All right, let's see. I'm going to full screen, screen share. There you we go. To, you should be able to pick which screen you're going to show. Can everybody see that? There yeah. it is. Awesome. That has got to be my favorite color scheme I have ever seen on a plane because I'm I'm a sucker for orange and it's got that beautiful fade, um, that fade underneath the orange, that really light blue f uh, streak. That's just a great looking bird. And then since then he's got flying giant logos on it. He's got RC groups on it. Um, there he's hanging his tongue out. Yeah. You know what my favorite color scheme is? Hmm. Red lipstick and leather. Is that it? <laughs> Yeah. Is, that, is that too much? That too Negatory. Much. That's actually pretty good. Uh, that's actually a line from a song. I have no idea. See, this you're you're treading into territory that I know nothing about. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my screen now. I'm gonna try to share screen. Don't share that one screen that you. And anyway. All right. I have no idea. Wait, I'm just kidding. All right. So there's Miss Patty Wagstaff. Look at all that. Oh wait, am I still sharing? So there's Miss Patty Wagstaff and Jim, and then you can see it's the bulging eye Terry at the front, which we don't see too much of. And then it's got flying giants between them, or behind them. And then on the wing, really big, it says knife edge. That's awesome. I'm going to hit the next button and see what we get. Oh, and there's a close-up of Patty and Jim. Patty's the one with the pink hair. Of course. Jim is the one in the lumberjack shirt. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, he was uh, down there. I don't know. I don't think lessons is the right way. He was in some sort of Patty Wagstaff flying seminar. So at one point, I called him and he answered his phone on Google Hangouts. And Patty was. I said, "Is that Patty Wagstaff talking in the background?" And uh, so he left her. And there's a nice uh, full shot of the bird. Awesome. Very cool. So we might have an RC model of that someday. That would be really cool. I'll take one. You'll pay full retail and like it. You got it, buddy. You will like it. 
Hey, I don't forget, sure. live listeners on uh, Google Hangouts, you can use the Q&A uh, button and submit questions that we can answer and talk about so you can get involved mm -hmm. and uh, communicate all, with us. Do it. All 290 of you. Hey, uh, before we, I forget about what I'm thinking about right now, each, for the last three weeks, I've tried to get on this topic, and somehow we got off of it. I don't know how that happened. Hey, Jim, oh. before you go there, <laughs> <laughs> what is on your hat? Right here? The white thing. Yeah, what is that? My wife walks in the office, and she's like, blah, blah. There's something on your hat. I mean, I don't know what she thought this might have been, but the way she said it, it sounded like a booger type. <laughs> it looks like a peg. I'll lean up. I'm going to – oh, sorry. So uh, back when uh, I was doing a lot of micro quads, I didn't want to have to call Jason to, to go help me videotape something smaller than my hand. So what I did is I made a mount for a uh, video camera. Ah. And, and so I would turn the camera on the quad, so you're seeing it from the quad, and then I would hit record on this, and then I'd fly it in front of my face and spin around and then fly away, and I would use those for intros and outros. Mm. That makes sense. I was just like, what is that? It worked. I knew it was something like GoPro-y. Go yeah. So I wanted to talk about, think of this as sort of a feature article for the live broadcast, selling things, RC things, on the Internet. Because I am kind of thin in the herd uh, in a big way, but just because of room. And so I have found I have sold on eBay. I've sold at shows. I took some stuff down the other day and sold it at the FPV race that we're going to talk about later. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, I, the other day I put something up on RC Groups, put, and I try to put a price that I don't feel guilty. I don't feel bad about for selling it cheap, but not so high that it will never sell. And then I always pay for shipping because I don't know. I, yeah, because shit. that's what you have to do. Well, I don't – I almost – if it's retail, I always go for free shipping. If it, I have to pay for shipping, man, I might not buy it. You know? And so I put in a lot of pictures, good description. A video always helps, and, uh, and I only ship continental U.S. People in Canada always get on me. Yeah. Like, man, it's just Canada, but I have had stuff stuck on the border for two weeks before. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's risky. I don't, I don't like to spend your money if you send me something. I don't like to spend that dollar until I know you got it, it's not broken, and you're like, okay, this is what I paid for. Yeah. That's uh, smart, yeah. The, yeah, go ahead. I, I've always sold a lot of stuff on RC Groups, you know, even before I worked here a long you know, long time ago, and it's it's really one of the best ways to, to sell stuff. The only you know, I think I would prefer selling at a swap meet or locally, just because yeah. there's no shipping and no PayPal fees that you got to eat, and so you and can, they see you can, it. Yeah, they see it. It's there. It's it's done transaction. They can't come back a week two later and yeah. and then try to scam you and and say that something was broken or something online. You you know, so that's why I really recommend um, looking at the trader rating on RC groups because there's a lot of active users, a lot of guys that. Are buying and selling, and and they get rated, um, like by the FBI. No, like by each other. So oh, rated, rated. So if you had a good transaction, you can say, hey, great seller, you know, good communication, whatever, and they get a trader rating number, and and you can look, and if you see a guy that's got a bunch of negatives or uh, some some bad sketchy stuff, you know, associated with him, you might not want to sell to that person or, or move on yeah. or not want to purchase something from that person. So. It's a good little resource to Let use. me say, as a moderator and a guy who is behind the scenes, Jason, too, there are bad people out there, and I will not sell to anyone with a zero trader rating. And your question is, well, how do I get a good trader rating? Well, there are ways to sell and, and make a few sales under your belt you know, on uh, stuff that people aren't afraid to, to give you a shot on. But um, there was a guy the other day. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember how I found it, but I jumped in a thread, and it was uh, – oh, this is kind of internal, but it's – it's a. am going to say it anyway. Somebody reported a user, and I checked that user, and it turned out that guy was reporting himself, and he had like 10 accounts, and he made them all to scam users with. 
Wow. Holy moly. At least 10 accounts. And if you're a user on RCG uh, and you saw this thread, you know what I'm talking about because I went in there and I said, hey, uh, this guy's account's closed, so all, are all of his others. And what? And, and, and if it smells funny or feels weird or too cheap or something like that, it usually is something you should stay away from. This yeah. They were catching this guy for using the same images on multiple scams. Yeah, his, I'm telling you. His name was Zika, as well, in the Zika virus. Oh, yeah, well, that doesn't give it away. There you go. Every name he had, almost every one of them, was like a clue that you shouldn't deal with him, yeah. and people were still sending him money. And, and you remember I got taken a couple years ago for about 550 bucks oh. on a DLG. Um, I bought one. He was supposed to. I was going to do an article on it. He was kind of do, offering a service for users where he was going to build gliders, build DLGs, and send them to people that you know to help beginners get started and stuff. And I was like, well, I, I want a DLG. This is before I got my snipe. And uh, so I paid him and waited and waited while he was supposed to be building it. And it was, he had sent some out to people, and I was just in line and and waited and waited, and stuff kept happening. And he ended up having some. I don't think he was a thief. Um, to begin with, it just some bad circumstances with medical things and issues and of course, and, uh, of course, right? Never, As always, yeah. Never, never got my money back. Never got my plane, and Did I just paid PayPal. I paid PayPal, yeah. Well, the, but, uh, the other thing I have to say, I know you're going to go somewhere with that, but always use PayPal. Never gift it because when you gift it, there's no recourse. They'll take your money and run. But you pay them standard PayPal, and then if they if they do something uh, shady, you can go back to PayPal and get your money back. Yeah. Hey, and you know was, what's on even... my, on my issue, it was way past the time limit because there is a time limit. Yeah. You um, know what I do is uh, I do exactly what you guys just said. However, I try – if I feel sketchy about it, if, I, if it's a big money item, I will use, fun, use funds from my credit card for the, uh, for the PayPal transaction – and that the the credit card people are much more understanding than PayPal ever will be. All you have to do, at least with my, I use Capital One and, and City, and man, they if the second you say there is fraud, somebody did not send me something, they will instantly reverse it for you. Nice. So it's like a double barrier. If PayPal doesn't work, if you're outside of the PayPal window of opportunity, your credit card company won't even ask you two questions. They will just say, okay, we're investigating now. Here's your money back. And then uh, yeah. they will take that guy clean and take him to court. They don't mess around, man. So, But I'm the same way. Like, I get sketchy about dealing with people. I will only send uh, inside continental U.S. I put that in all of my RC groups classified ads. But I always get the question, hey, brah, ship to Canada, or however they say it. And you know what? I usually do it. I usually say Canada, okay. I'll do North America. So I shipped to a guy in Canada just the other day, and I said, I'm not sending it priority because it's going to be $49. I'll just send it regular old, uh, and it wasn't a high dollar item. It cost me 6 bucks to send to Canada. He That's already awesome. got it. Yeah, he got it within, uh, within two weeks, I told him. And so that was good. But the other problem I have is darn old Tower Hobbies in their thirty and sixty dollar off things. So I'll take an I'll take an item and I'll put it on this has happened to me like five times. I'll put it on R C groups classifieds and usually ah. my, it, it, and then somebody will PM me and say, Hey man, just not trying to try not trying to do a disservice to you, but I can buy this brand new on Tower Hobbies and use my um, Tower Hobby Saver Club plus thirty percent off and get it for Ten dollars under what you're selling it for used. I'm like son of a gun. <laughs> All right, okay. You know, so it's sort of a game that I play where I'll put something up and uh, and make it a good deal, but not like uh, not something that I'm getting taken to the cleaners on, and then sort of negotiate from there. You know. I tried UPS for a while, and every time I'm like, what? You want how much money? And so now yeah. I ship everything, Continental U.S., uh, Priority. Yeah. It's always about eight, nine bucks. Now, I set up a FedEx account online, and for some reason it's cheaper. I swear to God, if you, if you walk into FedEx, for some reason the same item will be more expensive to ship and if you, than if you set up a FedEx account, weigh it in your house, do it all out and print the thing out, and it goes straight to your bank account. It, it's really strange, but I prefer FedEx now. So that's me. How about, 
How about some Amazon shipping? That would be awesome. I mean, Amazon comes to my house every day now. Here's my impression of Amazon shipping. <laughs> Kaploosh. Anyway. So I ha- I ha- we were uh, eating Japanese food the other night, and I was complaining about guilt. I had guilt about all the boxes from Amazon I get, and uh, <laughs> and my uh, my friend was like, he lives in a high rise, and he's like, I have to haul all these boxes downstairs, and so I'm thinking that uh, Amazon should have like three sizes of boxes, and then you just ship them back, or whoever picks them up, you used to leave them at your door, and they recycle, reuse these boxes because after. I don't know how long you can sustain a box rate at this level. Uh, yeah, that's a really good idea. Why don't you implement something like that? I know. My friend was like, sounds like a company, Jim. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm busy. I, there's a lot of news stories. <laughs> hey, do you know that if you want your RC stuff on Sunday, buy it from Amazon? Yep. Isn't that great? I didn't even know that. I, I start getting packages on Sunday. It's all yep. Amazon stuff. What's up with I, that? Well, this is kind of funny. So the, the Amazon's using USPS on Sundays. And mm-hmm. so I, I've got this thing set up that tells me when a package is coming, and it says, this has happened to me three times, package, out for delivery, USPS. Sunday. Amazon. Sunday, right? I know, and I'm like, this is too good to be true. They must it's be awesome. true. Then at 4 o'clock, I get an email, package could not be delivered. What? I click on it, and it says, a carrier could not find place to put package. Now, we're talking flat, small, it's the mailboxes. You stick it in that. <laughs> don't you live in a gate? Don't you live in a gated community where well, everyone drives golf carts anyway? I live on a street, and uh, I think that that mailman, the first three or four times, was like, "I'm not delivering anything on Sunday," and he just marked it as undeliverable and just went on his mailman <laughs> way. That's a good theory. I think you should investigate. Oh, I did. I went down to the post office. Call the postmaster general. Who is that? Wilford Brimley. It hasn't happened since I went down there. Wilford Brimley. That's two shows in a row we've brought up Wilford Brimley. I will always bring up Wilford Brimley in every... Look, we lost two viewers. Check your blood sugar. Check anyway. your blood sugar daily. <laughs> okay, I, I got something you guys don't even know about. Talk Maybe. to me. <laughs> um, my blood sugar's high. No, that's not it. Um, I just yesterday was on the phone, yesterday evening with Clint Stone... And I was talking to Tim King last week. Clint Stone. I got an email this morning. <laughs> See how I just keep going. I got an email this morning. Just ignore me. From Mark Davidson at uh, Triple Tree, a la Joe Nall. Yeah, yeah. And the FPV course is a done deal at Joe Nall this year. Say Boom. it. We have the FPV. Say it, Jim. <laughs> we have the FPVs. So, uh,. <laughs> Um, it's done. They're using a multi-GP track. <laughs> Look at Matt Gunn. Aww. He's cracking up. Did something tickle you, Matt? <laughs> were, were you good for Santa this year, Matt? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay, I'll stop. He, he's verklempt. He's <laughs> all verklempt. <laughs> Do you have the papers? Oh, I love the mic manager. When, when you say we have the FPVs... I don't, know. I don't know why that's so funny. We have the FPVs. See, there's a breaking point where it's not funny anymore. I tell my son it's only funny once, man, after the 20th time. So anyway, there is going to be an FPV course at Joan Hall, and it is going to be a multi-GP track. I have the story sitting in front of me. I was looking for a few more photos. That's why it's, why it's not live yet. Um, but in my story, I haven't, like I say, hit the button. Matt, Jason, I have a paragraph that says, I know, comma, I know you're going to say FPVs ruining the hobby. Yes, why is wonderful. it at Joan All? And then, I, and then I went on to discuss why I think it's at Joan All and why this well, is, yeah. You're right. You're right, 100% for saying that because of the crew, the Joan, Joan Alls all fixed wing plankers. I mean, you know it, right? And... I will say that last time, I think we discussed this anyway, last time at Joe Nall, last year, 2015, was sort of the intro, well, the revolution, the the FPV 250 size revolution was in full swing. Everyone was hating on it. Uh, Those who flew it were like, you don't know it until you try it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, long story short, a guy was flying his 250, 
down, and some dude threw a freaking bottle at it, man. Like, and so you're right. People hate on it. It's not ruining it for the hobby, I don't think. And you're right. That's what people are going to say. It's well, the good, the, the good news is it's nowhere near a main line or a 3D line. It's over on the back side of the heli line in the bowl down there. So it will not get in anyone's way except the people who really love FPV and want to go fly some FPV. I know some people that will be down there, me, you, Jason, all of us, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got some stuff. Let me think. That was going to segue into something. Seg. Go ahead. Well, I've forgotten what the segue was because I... Oh, yeah, you were talking about your article and how you were saying that... Uh, well, if uh, he needs good tips for uh, frequency control, I'll be talking about that at some point Oh uh, well. podcast. So, um, Tim King is going to be... Tim and Clint will be down there doing their thing. They did the Heli Extravaganza last year. And we're also going to have the FPV gates. The RC Group's FPV gates will be out there amongst them. So you get to fly through those. That'll be awesome. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I hope there's some fixed wing fun out there too. Uh, I'm gonna Clint, I'm gonna bring my banshee. There's not a whole lot of room for that. Even on tight tight racing. It's I mean, if it's the same place and size and area as it was last year, it was I mean, basically quads is all you can get down there. You're not gonna We could fly there's, Jason. There's just uh, not enough safe room to fly an airplane unless you just go out way over the trees or something. But it, are we talking that, up front? Nah, I don't know. Clint did say they were where people would be wanting to fly things like this. So I don't okay, know what that means. Well, that's good. And maybe maybe it's a different little area. But I thought it was between the heli line and the main line, oh, kind of near the entrance. That was my segue. Um, we were talking about how uh, FPV, kill, uh, you know, the guys that feel that way that are anti-FPV. So Jason invited me out Sunday to the local multi-rotor uh, FPV racing quad club. And it was a beautiful day. My wife is like, go, go. And I'd already done my thing on Saturday for the family. So I charged a bunch of batteries and headed out. And there's a lot to be said about this FPV racing that, we, that, that went on there. But um, the thing that really blew my mind was everyone there was about 28. Mm -hmm. That's a median age. And, every, and a lot of those guys, maybe 60 70%, had only been flying a couple of months. Yet, yeah, and they were ripping it up, weren't they? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. they were. The, at the very least, they were really into the hobby. Uh, they came over and talked to Jason and I about our quads on the table, about our transmitters, about our goggles. And so the thing that excites me, as a guy who's been in the hobby a long time, I remember going to Toledo the first year and thinking, "Oh my God, everyone will be dead in ten years. That's walking the Toledo floor, mm -hmm. you know, and and the future of the hobby." And so when you have a segment like this that brings in all these young guys who are real, just as rabid as the old guys, that is a great indicator that RC is going to live way past us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I'll go ahead and touch on this now. But we've been, you know, this club's been around for years. We've been getting together, flying, having club meetings and talking about new stuff, showing off new gear and having, you know, seminars and all kinds of stuff. So it's a, it's a pretty healthy club, even though we're not, Super organized necessarily. There's not even a, like a treasurer, or club president, or dues. It's all free, just for the Music City, uh, you know, kind of area here in Nashville. Um, but one of the things we've constantly ran into with the technology is is the frequency control and somebody turning on next to you and shooting your video down and having issues and stuff like that. And you know, we had the new race band stuff that's come out, and it doesn't really solve the problem because not everybody has it and it's only a 30 megahertz frequency separation which isn't really enough unless you really alternate left hand right hand antennas and then even still you could you could get some bleed over so I don't know I don't know who to credit for this this was not my idea but um, I don't know who came up with the idea of using these specific frequencies but I know Matt Bennett uh, one of our local guys it's kind of been uh, really helping out the club a bunch, organizing some stuff, and, and really putting a lot into our racing efforts. Um, came up with the idea of having uh, set chairs for pilots. So we've got one, two, three, we've got five pilot stations that will set out the, these chairs, and on the back we put a little frequency tag um, on it that <coughs> um, has the frequency that that chair represents and then has a little cheat sheet 
of um, the, the different dip switches or the different settings for your transmitters for some of the more popular ones out there, so you could easily kind of reference that. And it's to make it easy for you to change that frequency if that chair is open. Um, and then so what we've, what we've basically are using are five frequencies that are really spread apart. So we're using 5645, 5740, 5800, 5860, and 5945. Now the interesting thing is none of those are race band channels. So you don't need to have a race band transmitter, but we can fly five guys at a time and have zero video issues. It just yeah. works. Those, those, are, those pictures are your setup, right? Yeah, so you might think it's a pain in the butt at first, but it's really not. It really makes things simple. Hey, look at that guy. You can, you can go over and you know know what channel you're going to be on. I made a little chart that I have in a picture on my phone that I can change any of my transmitters or any of my receivers so I can pick any one of those five channels, whatever, there's a seat open, and I can sit down in that chair, turn on and go fly and not bother anybody. So it's really just made things a whole lot smoother. We've been running the multi-GP um, races uh, for the last couple of weeks now. We do this every weekend when the weather's you know, allows it. Um, but I think that just is a great idea. You don't have to have eight guys flying at once. I mean, that'd be nice, sure, but five is a lot and plenty and, and makes for an awesome racing time. Um, it's still plenty of people in the air at once, and... And then you just don't have to worry about bleed over and ghosting and all these issues. Um, so I think that was brilliant. Whoever came up with that, good job. It's working for us. Hey, uh, and, uh, Matt's idea with the chair system is just working brilliantly too. So if you guys want to take that and use it at your local clubs, it is doing wonders for us. So there you go. Talk about this thing, Jason. Yeah, so uh, one of the guys uh, created a – not. I mean, it's. I think it's open source software. Uh, but we have a timing system, so we all get these little IR transponder LEDs, and we can plug them into the balance port of a LiPo battery, or you can hook it up to a 5-volt source on your copter if you've got extra pins available on your flight board. And uh, that's it right there. So that's the receiver system next to the, the start-finish gate, and it's got a various you know IR receivers sensors that's on there. A as tiny gate. Yeah, it was really tiny. I didn't think we were going like to be able to hit it at first. Sewer pipe. It's only like four feet across. It's pretty dang small, but we were making it. So um, but the timing system uses a, um, it's not Arduino. What is the, what is the other like mini computer system thing that people play with? Blueberry Pi? Raspberry, raspberry Pi. Pi. Yes, it's Raspberry Pi <laughs> and open source software. Apple Pi? Apple Pi. Apple Pi. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. So, but basically, it worked awesome, dude. So every time we'd go through, it would register it, and then he's got the speaker system, and and he was doing things like unstoppable and, and just fun stuff, like as you pass by, that it would it would go through and let you know there, and it was tracking all of our time. I was waiting for that. Yeah, I knew I was going. You have the timings. So we could all sit there by the computer after a race and look at each everybody's individual lap times, your average lap time, you know, your fastest lap. All this data, so it's really cool. Um, I think that's going to be getting more and more popular and required. Like the cave race we're going to at the end of April, uh, hey. they require a transponder like this. Um, this is a good visual track. of the chair system. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So all we do is, from that picture oh. there, we have these we have clothespins, and so we write our names on them, and then it's just kind of a little thing. You can see the guy on the right; he's got a clothespin up on the left side of the paper. That just means somebody's flying that channel because you could be uh, you could be crash and you got to go out and get your copter, so you might leave that chair and the chair would be open, but your pin is kind of up there on the left hand side, indicating that you're kind of on that channel um, using that frequency currently. And then so when you're not flying, you kind of put your pin back down on the bottom. Um, so it, it works great. You know, you just got to remember yeah. to move the pins around. That's the only kind of tricky thing. But other than that, it's it's pretty brilliant. Well, I watched your. Uh, go ahead, Jim. No, you go ahead. I watched your video uh, of your course, and well, first of all, I wanted to say that your your video signal was pretty bad. I would never use whatever video uh, 
the transponder <laughs> unit. <laughs> Sorry, that's an inside joke. Got, got flack uh, for that, right? Uh, no, I was trying to be funny. I'm sorry. I, that was anyway, me in a hurry trying to get some video, uh, and then I, I laid my monitor on the ground. I uh, know. Well, anyway. I just like, I didn't care. I was just like, well, I just got to fly and do this. And I really know. liked your course. I think that course was awesome. It was weaving through the trees. You have natural... Um, uh, turns through the trees, and then you have your feather flags. Now, is that public? Is that public park? No, no, no. Here's the cool thing. So, you know, when I when I was flying uh, my powered paraglider, just down the road from that location is a is a private airstrip called T Top. So I used to fly out there all the time, and it's open. It's an it's a ultra light filled, huge runway, but it's all grass, you know. But um, we used to fly out there a bunch, and then on the way, I and or I would see this spot, and then I would fly over it. And I always wondered what it was, because um, it looks unique. Not in that part that we fly over looks unique, but also they've got like a some kind of track system. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew it was different. And then I remembered that, and then we were all looking for places to fly. So I said uh, to Brent, one of the club guys, we wanted to get together. I said, let's just go to T-Top, the, the airstrip I used to fly at. It's wide open. There were some trees along the road we can play with and go have a ball. And we went and did that, and then... You know, the trees weren't enough. It was mostly just wide open flying, which can be pretty boring, even if you have gates and stuff. You just you kind of want some obstacles to play with. So I was like, man, there was this spot I remember seeing just right down the road when I used to fly over it. Let's go check that out. And we went over there, and it was awesome. I mean, what is it? Great place for, for FPV. There's just, you know, tight trees, spaced out trees, lots of foliage. Lots of open lanes, but but tight, you know, obstacles to play with. So we flew out there for a little bit, had a blast, and we, we were like, what is this? And then uh, the next time we went out, there was somebody mowing uh, bush hog in the field, and, and so we talked to that person and found out it was, I can't remember the name, it's it's the Tennessee Valley Tractor Audubon Society. Club. <laughs> it's, a tr it's an antique tractor club is Get what out. it is. And they've got a tractor pull track. You know, behind you know, back where we fly from, and they were they said, man, we don't mind you using the field. Just you know, take care of the place. Don't leave trash and that kind of stuff. And wow, so that's unheard of. Their have. field, it's private land. They they allow us to do that, and we're actually in process of of taking up club donations. We're gonna pitch in some money for the bush hogger for this for this year, and and uh, just show some appreciation for those guys letting us use their spot because it's a pretty epic place to fly. That a boy. Sounds like a good deal. Yeah, that's hard to come by, free, free land to use like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely hard because it's like 45 minutes to an hour away from Jim. Yeah. Mm. It's hard to find close places. Well, hey, uh, and some of those pictures, you saw the E-Sheen to uh, 180 Assassin, which I have here and just thought I would talk about on this podcast. It looks like a scorpion. Yeah, yeah it's from, uh, good call. Like this. It's very scorpion-like. And so this is interesting. Everyone likes to talk about the little uh, tail that uh, is polarized, but it's a different design. Circular polarized. It's circular polarized, but it's that skinny new style, right? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I guess the video was fine. We flew it on the course, and uh, I was amazed. At, uh, Jason, were you amazed at how long I stayed in the air before I smacked something? No, you're a good pilot. I yeah, wouldn't. But, I wouldn't. Oh, shucks. Up. Now, there were a couple of guys walking up the middle of the field, so I didn't actually follow the course, but I did bust through some gates and around trees and wing it around flags. And uh, mm -hmm. um, Victory, is that his last name? What's his first name? Jeff. Well, Jeff Victory. And I have his business card somewhere around here. Do you remember the name of his company, Jason? Oh, I do. And you know why? I, I probably shouldn't talk about it. Shouldn't talk about. It. Well, it's yeah. We're not going to go there. Something aerials, vivid hey, aerials. Well, vivid aerials is kind of my little side business oh. thing that we fly professional drones on, and they started a company called Vivid Aerial without the S. Are you, are you, are you filing a lawsuit against them? No, they said they didn't know, and it's it's yeah. It's long, long story. We're cool with it. They're cool with it. We're going forward. Gotcha. Interesting. I don't know, man. He was probably one of the better pilots out there, mm -hmm. and so uh, he's actually one of the uh, guys that's in the team that I'm on that's going to the cave races. So 
uh, and the video that I have on, I did a story about these guys and my trip on Sunday you can check out. And uh, I accidentally just grabbed his frequency, and he was flying the living smoke out of his quadcopter uh, to the point where I was yelling, Woo! Wow! Oh, you know, I guess that's pretty good when you got me screaming at you. But I flew this, and he said he was impressed with how fast I was going, which impressed me because I was – I. <laughs> <laughs> I've never raced that course or any other course. I've shot gates, but I've never been on a course before. So on the one hand, it's cool because it's a 180 carbon fiber frame. That I, and I, I, I crashed at the end. I knew I was coming in hot on a gate. I knew I wasn't going to make it, and I also knew my video was about to be too long. And I thought this would be a good time to uh, smack into something. So I smacked into a gate and broke my prop. The only other issue that I have with the Assassin, and I'm working on my review, I still want to fly this around a little bit more before I let it go uh, in the review, is um, this is the base, and the base is not carbon fiber. It's plastic, and it opens up, and it you can stick your battery in here. So I have a couple of issues. One is the proprietary battery. No. Oh. Yeah. Now, Jackie Fail. from Banggood was saying, don't get upset about this. These are not expensive. And I've got to think, this has an on-screen display, pretty robust on-screen display built into it. And i got to think that this battery is uh, talking to the OSD through these prongs on the bottom. It also has a thing on the end that you can squeeze, and it'll tell you your, how charged up your battery is. Mm. The other problem is this base. Uh, the first time uh, we smacked it in... This flew open, ejected the battery, which is fine. You might want to paint your battery yellow. And then <laughs> the bottom uh, broke off. The only thing holding this onto the bottom is just a, a piece little of... hinge. Yeah, a little, little metal, piece of metal. hinge, yeah. So mm. we bent it back and slid it back again and got back in the air. The second time, it did not break, and the battery did not eject. So I guess this base is the only thing I really don't like about it. And let me show you one more thing. They sent me the, the whole package. So these are their um, head play style goggles. I think they retail for 65 bucks. One of the guys out there said he ordered just these. And for an entry uh, type of, of uh, head play type of goggle, they're pretty good. Um, you can't move this lens. I've yet. That thing looks like one of those that you put on the back of a van when you're backing up. Yeah, you know, those things. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it almost looks like a like a large scuba mask. Well, it's it's pretty light and it's a single channel. It's got a button here, and so I had no issues using it except for it didn't work with my eyes. I literally had to hold it like this to see it. Mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. Jason, you put it on. Could you see it was the camera was dark because of the time of day, but uh, focus wise, was this okay? Yeah, focus with wise, it was fine. Yeah, it looked the image looked fine. I think I think the camera doesn't handle the looking into the sun so well because it, it, the ground got so dark right. that I, I thought it was maybe the goggles at first, and I was like, I can't use this right now or something. So I went and looked at your monitor, and your monitor looked exactly the same. So it must have been a camera. The camera on it um, the goggles. You know, could be a little better for different lighting conditions. It was near the end of the day, and we were when I, that, and that happened, I was going right into the sun. So The other that's thing, why. they come with this rechargeable 9-volt which I charged both these up, and it didn't last very long. And um, Is that really a 9-volt? It's a lithium, what's well, in the shape of a 9-volt. Oh, it's, I see. It's a lithium pack. It's not an actual uh, right. alkaline, is it? No, but it does have, uh, it looks to me like you could use a 9-volt up here if you wanted to. Look at that little thing. Yeah, it's got a USB port in the bottom for charging. Hmm. So you get a pair of those in the unit. And then it came with, and I have nothing bad to say about this transmitter. I have at least one other quad on this thing. <laughs> what the East Bean I6. It's it's uh, above, you know, when you get something that has a transmitter with it, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna switch this out. You're like, I'm gonna throw this in the trash. Yeah, and put it on my standard transmitter. Now I have a killer DX9. Um, but this is already set up. It has the on-screen display, by the way, that goes through the goggles, uh, kind of works through the transmitter as well. So when you're running out of battery, not only does it warn you in the goggles, it warns you on the transmitter uh, visually, and then it also vibrates and, and beeps. to let you Ah, a little two-way telemetry. Which is probably why you have that battery on there to be talking to all this stuff. Yeah. So um, 
I mean, I flew the course. I uh, was flyable when I walked away. There was nothing that kept me from flying after. And so it's pretty cool. And uh, I also love this case. Yeah, that's your giant head place. The case is awesome, man. Ishin. 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 Ishin assassin. It'll kill you. <laughs> And then, while I'm talking and Jason's minding his dog. No, you know what that was? No. I still DHL, hear it. DHL, baby. What? It was DHL delivering a package. So Did they just deliver it? Did they just deliver it to your bedroom door? Because I didn't even see you walk out the room. No, I asked my wife to bring it to me because I wanted to talk about it on the podcast. Yeah, open that live on live TV. This is a live unboxing right here. 2,000 live viewers are going to watch that, so careful. <laughs> oh, buddy. There it is. So, what, is what this is, ah, oh, it's taped up. I don't have my knife next to Wait, me. You don't have a knife handy? Just nearby. There we go. We'll do it this That's way. That's not a knife. So, <laughs> is that a graphic? This, was, uh, this, this is self purchased, but. Is it a hairstyling a product? Little tool. Is it a pet egg? Kicking it off. This is a uh, prop. Um, a, oh, a prop cutter. The prop new cutter, cutter right? Yeah, and so you put your thingy on there. So yeah, I'm, that, I'll be able to. Because uh, <laughs> the reason I want to do this, and this is something maybe we that any vendor that listens to this or something can work on. Um, so I've got my little mini guy here, my little 160 that I've shown and talked about before. I was running the two blade, you know, three inch props. Mm -hmm. And I was running uh, the bull nose, and they were pretty thick and tough, and you know, heavy duty. And these are the three bladers, and these are pretty thin and flimsy, so I'm not sure how well they're going to hold up. So what my plan is, here's my new one, the 180. Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. It's got four inch three blade props, but these are the same bull nose style kind of as my three inch two bladers were. So I want a three blade three inch prop like this that is this heavy duty, but I can't find any online. All I can find is the really thin, kind of more traditional style. Yeah. Um, so what I'm gonna use is I wanted this prop cutter so I can take my four inch bull nose props, cut them down to three inches, and then have a heavy duty prop for my little I like guy. it. Now you use your Dremel on that, right? You put your Dremel on it yeah, and you, you put shave right through it. it. Yep, and then you can adjust the uh, distance to whatever. I think you can go from two and a half inches to maybe six. Holy moly, two and a so half. So you can inch cut props. down, you know, any any of your. Uh, a lot of guys cut down their six inch props to make them five inch bull nose. You can do that with this, and I'll Who be able to cut down four inches to Where'd three. Where'd you get that? Who invented that? Oh, this Turnigy. is uh, this is Turnigy Hobby King. I actually this ordered came this. Out. I ordered this like two days ago, and it showed up today. And I, I ordered was, it from the international warehouse, which is blown yeah. anyway. I was expecting to wait a couple of weeks for it. I was just on the phone talking to somebody about Hobby King, and they were like, what is your opinion? And, you know, I've known Hobby King since United Hobbies. Hobby King is our podcast sponsor and us an uh, advertiser on RC Groups, of course. But I remember when they were United Hobby. And then what was their second name? Hobby, Hobby City. Hobby, Hobby City. City. Yeah. And they became Hobby King. So I've been around them forever. And and uh, take a, you know, there's definitely a past back there and a lot of uh, ill will and, and things. Um, but right now, stuff like that that you just held in your hand, uh, they come out with really creative uh, mm -hmm. stuff. Lots of goodies, yeah. Hey, Jason, what are those brand of four-inch bullnose three blades that you have? What, what um, brand is that? Are those the... Uh, these are the HQs. All right, I like those. I'm gonna have to invest in some. Yeah, and I'm planning on running. I've got. I've also got a QAVR on the way, and I'm planning on using this. I'm, I think I'm gonna probably go 2204 motors, and run these oh. same four inch three bladers. On See, I'm not good enough of pilot to get the winning edge between 1806s and 2204s on this uh, 180. So I'm going well, to just fly these 1806s and 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 polish my skills. I don't know that there's a big difference. I mean, there may be some power difference, but I just happen to have 2204 sitting mm -hmm. on my table over there, not doing anything. So I'll just use what I got. So Jim, what's the status? Have you put the uh, the carbon rods in that beautiful wing yet? Before we go there, I was going to talk about my quad that's coming. I've got that new RXD 250 from Hobbyco coming my way. Oh, the foamy one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, man, I'm going to call it the off-road quad, and I created a new term in the article. I, I <laughs> called myself a, a quad quad basher, I think. Quad it's basher. And we may have a, like an Archie Group's user with that username. What's yeah, that? And, he, and his, his line is, they're going to ruin it for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> his custom user title. Yeah. But quad bashing is, and so the question is, what is quad bashing? Uh, for me, quad bashing is sitting on my picnic table in my rather large backyard and flying around obstacles like trees, chain link fences, dogs, and uh, other things, branches. And so that, I think that's what this thing is made for. And then we'll take it out to the field and, and uh, get it up to speed and run it around some gates and see how it works out. So the nice. one thing, Jason, I didn't do is tell her uh, when I got this assassin, they sent me just enough props and one battery to get in the air. And when you're trying to shoot a video, that really shortens your time frame. Yeah, for sure. right. So I need to hit Miss Abby, Jinx, and uh, tell her I need some more props at the very least. I bet I have batteries that'll work. Yeah. Abby Jinx, y'all. So there's a very uh, – the day before I might have gone out to the field on Sunday, I thought I'm going to build this. I Actually, I started it that morning, and uh, then I realized I could either finish this or go fly with Jason. So I put this down, but I used foam adhesive – not foam adhesive. Yeah, foam adhesive is a glue I used to sell in the Billy Hell days. But foam, foam, tack. foam, foam tack, tack is the same as foam adhesive. I really think it's so close to what foam adhesive was back in the day that, I, I mean, it's kind of weird. I don't care if it is the same. But anyway, I used foam tack on the center, and then I put my wings on, and then I realized I probably should have put my carbon fiber in before I put these winglets on. Nah. But I ordered uh, – the carbon fiber, thanks to Matt Gunn telling me what to do. And so what I'm going to do is instead of taping this all up with crazy, uh, heavy, ugly, yeah, don't waste uh, your time. Omnidirectional yeah. tape. I'm going to go uh, carbon fiber here, carbon fiber as far here. Then I'm going to do as long as I can across the back, and then another one across the front. Mm-hmm. That's it. And that's all you need. Make it fit right, and then that's that. Yeah. Well, I could I could recommend that on that very front one, don't cut any deeper than uh, than you need to to get that spar in. The rest of them don't 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 matter as much. But if you cut too deep on that very front spar, you've now weakened the nose. If you do come in nose first, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you can split it. Uh, but I mean, once you but once you put that spar in there and glue it in, it's going to be stronger than stock. You know what you should make me, Mr. Gunn, is some nose tips for these guys. So some. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 3D, like these. Uh, this dude, is what I, you should 3D print him a blunt nose section to put right. his camera and stuff in, protected. You, yeah, you, you slide it on, and you with your foam tack, and then it's got a little flat spot for your camera to live on. That'd be awesome. I and could definitely do that, and I protected. actually I have one sitting right here. Um, and don't you need nose weight anyway on those? Uh, you do, yeah. You will. Well, once you put all that FPV stuff on there, you want. Yeah. But so. I'm not putting any FPV stuff except for my real tiny camera from Horizon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah all in one. And uh, that stuff's orange, which is even better because orange on the tip of this would look awesome. Yeah, here's my 3D printed. This is actually for a Swift. Nice. This is a, this is a cover for your, you know, to keep. And you don't have the same things that I do on that one, Jim. I have those uh, servo protector skids that came with mine. Yours did not. And I I think that's because they want you to go up through <laughs> the uh, body, right? Oh, really? I don't know. I just, just mount your servos on the top. That's Don't what I well I mounted mine on the bottom and then did did a long rod uh, a long servo arm going through. Yeah, yeah, I'd be more apt to go through the top and keep everything flush because I want to keep it flat. Mm-hmm. And Very then, nice. I can't wait to see that thing fly. Uh, speaking of not using any weight, um, we talked about this. We got this little uh, receiver from Spectromia. The Spectrum guys, Mr. Aaron. And uh, this thing can bind by itself, and I'm pretty sure do everything this wing needs to do. So Yeah, it works great. Is, I've been using mine on my little mini quad. It works awesome. That's amazing that that alone becomes the receiver. The satellite unit becomes the receiver. Well, we've it been is. doing that a long time. I mean, any any of the old satellites, even DSM-2 stuff, we could do that with the, the flight boards. They have the Spectrum-compatible plugs and options we were doing that forever it's just that you had to you had to bind it with a real receiver bind it to the model then you could unplug the satellite and then hook it into your flight board and stuff and then it would work but 
this one auto binds if there's no signal um, when you nice. power it up, so it's perfect. Good stuff. <laughs> That'll be fun to fly, man. We're at an hour right now. Hey, guys, I wanted to show you. Uh, wait, I don't have it sitting. Let me show you this real quick. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's see if there's any Q&A out there, if you have any Q or A. We have the A if you got the Q. Nope, no Qs and As. There's a little button on the upper right-hand corner if you're actually a uh, Google Plus member, and then you can ask us questions. Jason, so, weren't you going to get a haircut today? Uh, I'm a, I'm a uh, try a little three-inch cut. And... Didn't you go to the dentist today, Jason? I do go to the dentist. That might, I might be talking a little weird because I think I'm going to have to have it cut down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too long. I told you I'd do all that for it you, man. fine. I can use maybe I can use the new prop maybe I can use the new prop tool and put a drum yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. Do it that way. But I had a permanent crown installed. Oh god. Pain in the butt. They had they got the stupid cement stuck in between my teeth and they had to like push something through and then like yeah, yank did it you, down out and get all that cement out of there. It was did, did you the chide them for not having their own three D tooth maker like my dentist? I almost mentioned it. I wanted to mention why don't I? Why didn't I get a permanent crown the day of like Jim T does? But I don't know. They're too. They're too pretty there to, to really mess with. Well, All right, Matt Gunn, What what have we been keeping? Oh you? yeah. So as many of you know, AKA the two of you, um, I'm always searching for the perfect charger. Like I have gone. I have gone through so many chargers trying to find something that can initiate a charge quickly, doesn't require 50 button pushes, it's still safe to use, and it can charge my big 6S5000 packs. Enter my new favorite charger, the Turnigy Quad Core Reactor. The, the Turnigy, Turnigy Reactor. Quad Core Reactor. Actor, actor, this actor. is the mother of all chargers, in my opinion. Okay? How much does that thing cost? Two hundred and twenty-two dollars. That ain't nothing. No, and if you uh, let it sit on Hobby, you know, you open the page. You guys know how to do it. You open the Hobby King page. You wait a few minutes, and you wait for that thing to pop up at the bottom. It yeah. says you can have it. Two hundred six. So this charger right here is twelve hundred watts and can do eighty amps, and it is so fast. You plug into the side of it here, uh, instantly tells you what your cell count is. You don't have to put in the milliamps for the packs. You just oh, set your what? you set you set your milliamp uh, peak milliamp for the entire channel. Each one of these channels is separate. It's almost four chargers in one that share one that sort of talk to each other. So you can share you can tell it okay on channel one here. Uh, I want to set my peak milliamps to five thousand. Uh, let's just say and, and then all you do is you plug it in and it will never discharge or ch or charge past. 5,000, but it uses the uh, CV sensitivity, CV peak, uh, you know, or peak voltage sensitivity, so it doesn't rely on milliamps to to uh, terminate the charge. It just it's pretty dang accurate. It you, it's small, lightweight, looks pretty darn good, and you don't even have to. You just press start. You plug the pack in, you press start, and uh, it knows exactly what to do. And then. Once the charge starts, you can change your your amperage to 2C if you want. You can charge way above 2C with it. But I just put out a review on this. Check it out on rcgroups.com in the chargers and battery section. It is a good charger. Very nice piece of equipment. That's all. That's nice. Very cool, very cool. I use my high-tech quad charge, charger. I have two of those, and I use the auto charge feature a lot. But I have to put in, I have to tell it, you know, milliamps and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you guys got to try the iCharger Duo sometime, the 4010 or the 406B. It's very, things, very impressive. Are they expensive, though? They're pretty dang expensive. I mean, they're probably no more expensive than that one, but they're, they're only dual chargers, but they do a lot more amps and a lot more stuff. Like big stuff. The, yeah. the real question about a charger is how long is it going to last? Yeah. And, uh, the good news for you listeners out there is Matt Gunn will use that thing and find out exactly how long it's going to last. Yeah. I have it'll, it'll last old, until uh, the next battery technology yeah. comes out. <laughs> I have an old um, uh, eye, eye charger. What's the uh, Hyperion? I have a Hyperion uh -huh. 720 Duo 2 from 2007 that still 
charges like I mean I literally opened up the chassis side on it and it was packed full of dust and dog hair literally <laughs> full of it it looked like a dryer vent inside of nice. it so that that'll just go to tell you right there I I constantly used that thing for so long and it still holds up you know Hey Matt, I haven't read your review yet. Does that charger allow you to do the high voltage lithium, the 4.35 per cell charge? Only 4.3. Okay. So not 4.35, but it will do 4.3, and that's its that's its peak. Yeah, that's so. still better and safe. That's still yeah. a tenth of a volt higher per cell. Mm -hmm. Well, we still have one day left this week to get out all our stories before it's next week. And then we have to start prepping to go to Toledo. And then immediately after Three Toledo... Weeks exactly. Mm -hmm. Then we day. have to... After Toledo, uh, we'll he start heading out to Seth. Then we'll have a nice long physical and mental break before we go to Joe Nall. The, the uh, new and exciting part about all these events this year is Miss Ashley will be there with us. Hey! Yo! I just had an idea. That's uh, uh, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Miss Ash Ashley should have been on here today. I totally didn't think about that. But Matt Gunn, mm -hmm. you're gonna ask a question, and you live listeners are about. Oh, that guy's not gonna win anything. He just left. Uh, for our live viewers, uh, guys, we're about to give something away for live viewers. Don't leave. Let's see if one more person leaves. <laughs> okay. One more person gonna leave. This is live. Okay, don't leave. Oh, okay. We, we got him back. I already okay. know the question. Matt's going to ask a question in the upper right-hand corner's Q&A button. You're going to use that button to answer the question. If you answer the question correctly first, you will win an RC Groups T-shirt. Um, what do we have that they're going to win, Jason? Do you know what it looks like? What do you mean? What RC Group shirt will they get that's in stock right now? Oh, the, the this one, either in black or white. Okay, the blacks right. are my favorite. Um, <clears throat> that's my my uh, dress shirt when I go to every event. All I'll right, take it off my back and put it in the mail. Oh uh, God! Hope, hope you're a medium. Dingleberries in it. I apologize <laughs> that I did not remember this earlier in the cast and started warning you guys ahead of time, but but we're about to give it away. So Matt Gunn has a question. Q and A button up to the upper. If you don't win, join us next week and you'll have uh, you'll be extra prepared. Okay, okay. Matt Gunn, what is the dang do question? So basically, the question is something, if you were listening throughout this entire podcast, you will be able to answer this question very quickly and very easily. Jason Cole's FPV field, what is it used for? Who owns that field? What type of stuff resides on that field? Oh, that's I can remember. Question. Yeah, that's pretty easy. That's it. We're all we're all quiet. Like someone's going to yell out the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you already have your own shirt on. You can't win your oh. own shirt. Yeah. So hopefully somebody will chime in. Okay, I say we have a backup question. Oh, that was too difficult. Let's have an easier backup question. All right. We'll we'll do an easier easier okay, question. Q and A uh, button, upper right hand uh, corner. You punch it. How many ports? are on the charger that I just held up. One, two, three, or four. First one. Okay, to so we have new users logging in right now. If you're listening to us live, we're asking a question. You can win a free RC Groups t-shirt. Use the Q&A button to answer. How many ports... We're getting more users. How many ports are on the side of the battery charger? Hold the battery charger up, Matt. No, because they'll be able to tell right off the bat. <laughs> I got stuff to do, brother. <laughs> I gotta finish my story about uh, Joe Nall FPV. Okay, how many ports is this charger? We have the chat enabled. They may not be able to <laughs> ask Igor. Do you use the Q and A part? Oh, this is gonna be embarrassing if we don't have it up. <laughs> hold on, let me check. Hold on, hold on. Okay, y'all keep talking. All right. Oh, wait. Oh, we got answers, but they're both wrong. They're both wrong, but keep trying. Just keep going up. Just keep uh, going up with your number. <laughs> How many ports is this charger? It's How a many Kernigy ports? reactor yes. quad-core charger. How many ports are on this charger? Uh, we got a winner. Wait. It's a, 
Wait, what do you say? It's okay. Before I say the winner is there, I'm, it is. Okay, are we all in consensus that it's uh, Fly and Flea? I, I put his as the currently answering question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Flea. One, two, three, <laughs> four. <laughs> okay. Four four charger. Next, now how do we get Fly and Flea? Fly and Flea must talk to me somehow and give me his RC Group's username. So in the Q&A, Fly and Flea, post your RC Group's username. I'm going to send you a PM. Let's hope he's on. Or email address if you're not an RCG user. Now well, you better, own, he better, he's got to get on. he got to get on. He since you won on. the shirt, you only have to pay shipping and handling. <laughs> handling? How much is handling? Handling is $30. Shipping is 20 So it's... I'll make sure and wash it before I before. Well, I there's a too. processing fee too, and if you act now, we'll throw in another shirt for the price of seventy nine ninety nine plus. Okay, so your username is Flying Flea. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go shoot you a PM right now. And uh, if you don't hear from me, Flying Flea, shoot me a PM via RC Groups. I'm just Jim T Graham. That's my username. Yeah, that's ju that's it. Yeah. All right, I don't want to turn the podcast off before I do this, just to make because everything will vanish here. So I'm going to go to members. If you ever wonder how to find someone, go to members and type it in. Member search. Uh, that didn't work. Fly and flee. I wonder if it's all one word. Maybe it's fly in. I in. No, fly and flee. That's not working. Okay, fly. Uh, we may have to pick somebody else. No. Flying Flea's the man. Yeah, th there's Flying Flea. Flying Flea. You found him? Yep. He's got 12 posts, and he joined in 2009. Flying F-L-E-A. All right. All right. That's good. That means that we can end the podcast. Hey, next week we're going to do it again, except we're going to give away a shirt and a $50 plus account. So every day, Thursday, 2 Central Standard Time, <laughs> and... <laughs> All your favorite RC Group people will be here. Um, Aaron from 3D Hobby Shop may be on next week, and at some point we're going to get Miss Ashley on here. Hey, guys. Yeah. Um, Flying Flea is going to cost us some shipping to send it to Barcelona. Hey, Flying Flea. Uh, we said Continental <laughs> U.S. only. Oh, man. We got okay, this. Wait. We got this. No, no, no. Flying Flea, uh, we're going to keep this live and uh, transparent. Flying Flea's not going to get a shirt. He's going to get a $50 plus account. There you go. Better uh, than a shirt, and it'll get to you a lot faster. What do you think, Jason? Everybody cool with that? I think I'm cool with that. Flying Flea, I hope you're cool with it. The plus account's awesome, and it's $50 value. There you go. And Jason Cole can flip, uh, flip that on right I'll now. hook him up for a year. Go ahead and send me that uh, link to his user account, please. Yes, sir. We'll, take it, we'll make it happen. Barcelona. I have a friend in Barcelona, Flying Flea. Do you he's know a guy? Actually, he's actually, I'm sorry, you can go ahead uh, and fish. He's actually in uh, Menorca, which yeah. is Spain, uh, one of Spain's islands in the Mediterranean Sea, it says. So that uh, I just wanted to clarify. The old lead singer of the band I was in in L.A., St. Christopher, Chris Kelly, is in your area. He plays there. So if you ever see uh, Chris Kelly, tell him uh, Jim T. Billy Hell said hello. There you go. All right, guys, we have to get out of here because we have a lot of stuff to do. Thanks, yep. everyone, for joining us, listening, talking, hearing, experiencing, all the other things that occur. Uh, Jason, any last words? Uh, I just turned on Flying Please Plus account. Nice. Woo! 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 Matt Gunn, any last words? That was it. I just said it. Everybody fly safe. Don't ruin the hobby for the rest of us, and we'll see you next time. rcgroups.com. Bye, y'all.